Welcome to the Virtual Memories Show. I'm your host, Gil Roth, and you're listening to a weekly podcast about books and life. Not necessarily in that order. You can subscribe to the Virtual Memories Show on iTunes, or use our RSS feed with your favorite podcatcher. You can find the RSS feed in our websites, vmspod.com or chimeraobscura.com slash vm. We're also on Twitter and Instagram at vmspod, on Facebook at facebook.com slash virtualmemoriesshow, and on Tumblr at virtualmemoriespodcast.tumblr.com. You can support this podcast and get access to exclusive content with a recurring monthly donation via Patreon. Just visit patreon.com slash vmspod and set up your level of support. Every week you'll get new material from our patron-only blog, and you'll also get to listen to my monthly bonus podcast, Fear of a Square Planet, which features extra material from our guests and is only available to supporters of the show. So visit patreon.com slash vmspod or paypal.me slash vmspod and help me continue to produce smart conversation about books, art, comics, and culture every week at the Virtual Memories Show. Now, I was going to take this week off, uh, which I mentioned last episode, uh, because I did not have a guest booked and I did not want to half-ass a show and things have been kind of busy and, uh, well, I, I can make all the excuses I want, damn it, it's my show. Um, as it turns out, I did record a new episode yesterday, but we're going to be saving that one for next week. Uh, what you get here is our first Virtual Memories Thanksgiving special. See, around 4.30 last Friday, it occurred to me, I don't have a show, but what if I hit up all of our past guests and ask them what they're thankful for, it being Thanksgiving week and my having about 200 past guests. So I put together the email list of just about everyone who's ever been on the show and asked them to answer, I know the world's going to hell in a handbasket, but I'm thankful for dot, dot, dot. And um, a whole bunch of them sent back their replies, about two dozen or so. Uh, and that's what you're going to get this time around. It's a mini episode um, for the price you're paying. You know, you get what you, you pay for, I suppose. Um but anyway, a few of them did send in audio files instead of uh, text, and uh, we're going to get some respite from my ongoing drone by um, sort of interspersing those with the, uh, the the red responses that I'm about to get into. Um, at the very end, I will tell you what I'm thankful for, if I can think of anything good. Now, a few guests had non-text answers, so this episode is going to be accompanied by a, a devoted web page just for it. Usually I have a, a show notes blog post, but there's actually going to be a separate page. And that's going to be at chimeraobscura.com slash VM slash Thanksgiving 2016. And it'll also be at our sister site, vmspod.com slash Thanksgiving 2016. There'll be a dash between Thanksgiving and 2016. And, um, and that page is going to have photography from Jonathan Hyman, uh, cartoons from Bob Eckstein, a uh, video link from Liz Hand, and info on all of this week's guests, as well as the times that each one of their, their segments starts. Uh, so you can skip right to the ones you want to hear. So I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, my wife, Amy, has been prepping food for a few days for our little holiday get-together. Uh, we're also getting ready for our annual tradition, which is watching Jodie Foster's Thanksgiving movie, Home for the Holidays, uh, which I recommend to every damn body. Now let's hear what the Virtual Memory Show guests are thankful for. Andrea Sarumi, whose new book is Why Would You Do That? from Hickok Press, writes, I'm thankful for the generous, kind, and funny people in my life who work their butts off but never lose sight of what matters. They remind me that it's possible. Artist Dmitry Samarov writes, I'm thankful that I have projects immersive enough to make me forget, when I'm working on them, the shitstorm which used to be called the United States of America. I'm also thankful not to have been on social media for the last year and a half. If I had, there's no doubt that the men with the butterfly nets would have had to take me away. Chris Nelson, president of St. John's College in Annapolis, Maryland, writes, I'm thankful that I spend every day at a college where our students are hungry for learning, where reading fine works is undertaken by everyone, and where discussion of deep concerns arises from the texts and continues with serious students eager to share their insights and learn from others. 
Sheila Keenan, author of Dogs of War, writes, I'm thankful that Keith Richards is still kicking out the jams in these troubled times. Thanks for the sweet relief, Keith. Wallace Wilde Minozzi, author of Toscanelli's Ray and The Other Side of the Tiber, among other books, writes, I'm grateful for free-range chickens and the message they deliver. We are not machines. We need to get a life. I hope that reverberates into larger implications every time we crack an egg. I am grateful to people who have sheltered immigrants, invited them into their homes, understood the complexities of leaving a culture, family, and physical landscape behind. I am grateful to the people of Flint for having lifted their voices up above all the people who did not want to hear them. May the shame of that terrible blindness to their reality show us other blindnesses. Blessings on those who voted in California against plastic bags. All the fish in the oceans who now will choke on them because people were too lazy to accept this idea will carry your hopes in their last breaths. I'm grateful to those in California who also voted against the death penalty. Slowly, once again, we are seeing the light in this idea. I give thanks for the small group of protesters in Maine who are now being charged with civil disobedience for having pointed out that the U.S. is building 20 more nuclear submarines. They speak to the need to open our eyes. I'm grateful to the scientists who have discovered there are ten times more galaxies than we knew existed one year ago. And when I look back on this very troublesome year, its many profound disappointments and errors, like Pablo Neruda, I regret that I was not more thankful for chocolate ice cream. Here's Summer Pierre. This is Summer Pierre, and I am immensely thankful for my husband and son who keep me cracking up feeling loved even through the darkest days which we are weathering currently. I'm also immensely thankful for my community of cartoonists that keep me inspired and looking to the future. And I am also thankful for the beautiful nature that surrounds me that I'm able to walk through each day. I am very thankful for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The great artist Glenn Baxter writes, I just wanted to say that I'm thankful that I was able to come to an America at a time when the liberal humanist viewpoint was valued and hopefully will continue to be so until at least January. Meanwhile, I will be reading Ron Paget's poetry, which continues to illuminate our world. Haley Campbell writes, I'm thankful I'm not an American. Kathy Koja, author of the Under the Poppy trilogy and immersive theater director, writes, I'm thankful for the writers whose work has spoken to me so truly, fiercely, and indelibly throughout my life. Charles Blackstone, author of Vintage Attraction, writes, I'm thankful for the obvious, for having been on the Virtual Memories podcast, and as a result, for having the chance to get to know you, Gil, and see you in New York every once in a while. I'm also thankful for the new Alyssa Nutting novel coming out next summer, which I got to read in Galley recently, an e-Galley, no less. It was a first for me. The occasion seemed to merit it. And I'm thankful for the books that meant a lot to me this year. Probably most notably, Here I Am by Jonathan Safran Foer. I'm also thankful that in New York City, one cannot get anywhere near a kitchen on Thanksgiving and still have turkey. And I'm thankful for the times Haruki Murakami, the pug, just wants to hang out on the couch and isn't making unreasonable demands of me, particularly when the amiability coincides with long holiday weekends. Elizabeth Hand, author of Hard Light and many other novels and short stories, writes, For what I'm thankful for, apart from the obvious, friends and family, generally good health, etc., is that I live in a very small town whose residents, despite their often extreme political differences, get along and pull together. Liz provided a link to a video that demonstrates some of what she's talking about, and that's on the special page for this episode, chimeraobscura.com slash vm slash thanksgiving2016 and vmspod.com slash thanksgiving2016. David M. Carr, author of Holy Resilience, writes, It may sound cheesy, Gil, but I just find myself especially grateful to be alive each Thanksgiving. A common reaction, I know, to a near encounter with death, but that's where I find myself each year, now six years out from the accident that helped prompt my book. David Jayer, author of The Witch of Lime Street, writes, The world's going to hell in a handbasket, but the one thing I'm thankful for is that after a lifetime of heartbreaking summers, my cubs finally came through. Now here's Zach Martin, former major in the U.S. Marine Corps, now aspiring writer. Gil, I'm grateful for the people I've met this year. The new friends who fill me with energy, 
I'm grateful for long, stimulating conversations in places like Paris and New Orleans. I'm an atheist, so I have no God to be thankful to, but I'm thankful to my friends for being part of my life. Willard Spiegelman, whose new essay collection is Senior Moments, writes, One thing I'm grateful for is the common decency of most human beings, and another is the efficacy of laughter. New Yorker cartoonist Roz Chast writes, I'm thankful for the fact that I live in a part of the country that voted overwhelmingly against Donald Trump. Surfer, rocker, hippie, cartoonist Mary Fleener writes, I'm thankful that I live by the ocean in Encinitas, a small beach town that has citizens who are fighting to keep us from becoming Los Angeles. I'm grateful to have, I'm grateful I have my right hand so I can draw this graphic novel I'm working on, and I'm grateful to the eye doctor that fixed a goddamn hole in my retina last February. I'm in a band and we still rock and roll. Plus, we can smoke all the pot we want now. Glennis Fox, cartoonist and archaeological artist, writes, Dark times. I'm grateful for my family, friends, and for communities, both online and in real life. I'm especially grateful for comics festivals, where it's a joy to be around like-minded and powerfully inspiring characters. I'm grateful for my studio and the time to work, and also for the time I've had in the past for travel and for making things. No more taking such freedoms for granted. Ed Hermance, the retired owner of Giovanni's Room Bookstore in Philadelphia, just writes, My friends! with two exclamation points. Josh Allen Friedman, whose new album is 60, goddammit, writes, I stayed up all night thinking of things I'm thankful for. There are major blessings in my life, sheer greatness, things that are most important, my wife, my daughter, my dog, having good health, total immersion in two separate life missions and careers as a guitarist and as a writer. But then there are hundreds of little things, maybe not so little. The daily humiliations, the illogical behavior, cruelty, mental illness of the music and writing biz, the plagiarism and ripoffs and indescribable decades of injustice. All of those things that do their best to undercut the moments of glory, which give natural rise to bitterness and despair, almost to the point of unblessing the great blessings. Happy Thanksgiving. Photographer Jonathan Hyman writes, Despite the 2016 presidential election and the myriad social, environmental, and economic issues that have fractured our society, I am thankful that we are, and hopeful we will remain, a vibrant culture where people are free to speak openly and publicly. Now, Jonathan has some photographs to accompany that statement, as well as a, a bigger context for the pictures and what he's talking about, and they're going to be available on the page for this episode. And again, that's chimeraobscura.com slash vm slash thanksgiving2016 and vmspod slash vmspod.com slash thanksgiving2016. Liesl Schillinger, author, reviewer, and translator, writes, Five things. One, I'm thankful for the authors and songwriters who create fully imagined worlds that all of us can inhabit in utter freedom. Two, I'm thankful for the love and the example of my prodigiously productive, lively, and inspiring parents and friends. Three, I'm thankful for the sound of my cat's ladylike snoring, which always cracks me up, and the taste of haagen vanilla Swiss almond ice cream. Four, I am thankful that I live in the multi-ethnic, socially tolerant, idealistic, liberal, creative, democratic, and unsinkable city of New York. 5. I am thankful for every day I have lived in this country and world before November 9th, 2016. Poet and essayist Rachel Haddis writes, I am thankful for my beloved husband of almost two years. Shalom. My soul slipped out of me to live in you, as I say in a poem called, But It's True, in my 2016 book, Questions in the Vestibule. I'm also grateful for my son, my colleagues, my students. Banal, maybe, but true. But if you can only include one thing, Gil, make it shalom. Editor and book blogger Ron Hogan writes, I'm thankful for this opportunity to say what's on my mind. Since I'm having trouble putting my feelings about the election into my own words concisely, I'm going to borrow from the Thanksgiving prayer of William S. Burroughs. Thanks for the last and greatest betrayal of the last and greatest of human dreams. Yet I'm thankful, too, for those who refuse to let the dream die. And my own Thanksgiving prayer is that we preserve as much of it as we can moving forward so that we need rebuild as little as possible when the time comes. Here's Scott Edelman, author, reviewer, and new podcaster. This is Scott Edelman, and with Thanksgiving just a few days away for me, and perhaps for you occurring as you listen to this episode and attempt to ignore the relatives around you at the table, 
Your esteemed host has asked me to name a few things I might be thankful for at this time of year. Now, one of them is that I do not have to eat my aunt's diced liver stuffing because she is no longer with us, but I suspect that that is not what your esteemed host desires to hear. So let me just say this about the year 2016. It's the 40th anniversary of my marriage to my wife, Irene Vartanoff, who I met the first day I went to work at Marvel Comics, and I am extremely grateful and thankful that she has hung in with me for four decades. Oh my goodness, how is that even possible? I am thankful, as long as we are speaking of long-time things, that this year I sold a story to Analog Magazine, one of the oldest science fiction magazines in the world, in the universe, after 44 years of sending stories to them and having them rejected. So I am thankful for that. I am also thankful that on my own podcast, Eating the Fantastic, got off to a booming start thanks to the help and advice and guidance of your esteemed host, Gil Roth, without whom it would not have occurred. So I am thankful for that. And one final thing, I am thankful that I have a new zombie collection coming out of short stories, which was purchased this year and will come out the first quarter of 2017, called Liars, Fakers, and the Dead Who Eat Them. So I am thankful for so many things, both personal and professional, and thankful for an opportunity to tell them to you so that you might think of the things for which you are thankful. Happy Thanksgiving. Our last Thanksgiving wish comes from Tom Spurgeon, editor of Comics Reporter and co-author of Comics as Art, the oral history of Fantagraphics Publishing. Tom writes, I'm grateful for the ability to travel. I know people complain about it ceaselessly, but I like all of it, except maybe the tiny, tiny shuttle airplanes, which are so not built for tall people, one can only imagine being able to urinate on one from outside the aircraft. I'm both tall and fat, but airplanes most frequently fail my height. Still, it's not so bad. It's uncomfortable, but I can be uncomfortable for a few hours at a time if it means I get to go 2,000 miles in the amount of time it takes to watch a football game. I have friends all over the world I would not see if it weren't for the relative ease of travel. I have family I would only see rarely if it were more difficult to get from one place to another. I like driving, too, but only up to five hours and a half day. I still like disappearing on the road. That idea of having something to do that requires almost no real thought, but is a built-in excuse from all the indignities that people expect of you in your time. I like getting out of my head. I like eating nachos in chain restaurants and eating the newspaper. I like the people that dress up and the people that dress down. I like them equally. I wish all bags were checked. I don't mind picking them up at the carousel and look at those who do with a certain level of bafflement. I dislike paying anything extra. I'm the first to volunteer their bags to the final location. I like airports as shared spaces. I drink coffee at the airport. I get work done. I like getting on last and ruining someone's day. And that's the show. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Oh, yeah, I uh, I told you I'd tell you what I'm thankful for. Um, there's the obvious first world stuff. Uh, I'm in a happy marriage. I've got an awesome dog, a uh, roof over my head, good paying job, et cetera. Um, beyond that, things are a little weird. I mean, I'd, I'd say I'm thankful for my health, but actually I've had a couple of weird um, things come up in the past year or so. So I'm not in perfect, perfect health. Um, and it's all a sign of the advancing decrepitude of age, I guess. Um, still, I'm thankful my health isn't as bad as it could be. Um, family. I love them. I don't see them much. I'm thankful for the support they give me, but, you know, it's not a day-to-day, you know, interaction in my life, I guess. Friends. Most people are thankful for friends. This is going to be the weird, weird part, I guess. Um, One of the things I've realized over the last couple of years is that I really don't have many friends. Um, I know this is going to sound terrible, especially to those of you who think you're friends with me. Um... By friends, I mean people I talk to regularly. There's interactions online, but it's just not the same, I'm finding. Uh, I talk very little about my own life. On the show, I don't talk too much about it either. This is probably more than you've you've heard in a long time. Um, 
Yeah, and I know that's me, not not them. Um, just yesterday when I was recording a new episode, the person whose uh, apartment I was borrowing asked, so how's everything going? And I just said fine, as opposed to talking more intently about things in my life, I guess. So I'm happy for the friends I have. I wish I had more. I wish I was more able to open up about that. That said, you know, I'm still getting along pretty well. Everything's fine, in other words. The thing I'm really thankful for is this show, uh, which is going to sound hack, but whatever. If it weren't for this, um, I'd be a very different person. The, the interactions I have here, the conversations I have here mean the world to me. Um, and some of the people I've, I've had these episodes with have, you know, I've stayed in touch. Um, I've made friends through that. Um, and I get to, to learn about all your lives and the people who aren't guests, but are listeners and who've, who've reached out, um, in a sense, that's even more important. The idea that there are people out there who are receiving this, uh, for that, I'm immensely thankful. Um, anyway, that's pretty much what I'm thankful for. Uh, the, the, you know, to a lesser degree, health, family, friends, uh, but really this show and, and all the conversations it's opened me up to. And of course, all the books. So that's it for this week's virtual memory show. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week with either Mike Cole, who I recorded with uh, yesterday, or Drew Friedman, who I'm going to record with this weekend. Uh, we'll see how that one goes, and um, we'll decide which one is the next Tuesday and which one comes after. Now, our music for this episode is Nothing's Gonna Bring Me Down by David Bayerwald, used with permission from the artist. David's got a reunion project going with his great 80s band, David and David, and you can find out more and support that at facebook.com slash David and David Music. You can support the Virtual Memories Show at patreon.com slash vmspod or at paypal.me slash vmspod. There are all sorts of goals and goodies in place for supporters of the show, including a monthly bonus podcast called Fear of a Square Planet, a patron-only blog. I'd like to launch a series of ebooks next year. Uh, turns out I could do that pretty cost-effectively if I just get a little bit more support for the show and more. So go to patreon.com slash vmspod and support the art of fine conversation. This episode did not involve any traveling or anything, uh, no real costs, just a whole bunch of emails and my time. Still, if you want to help defray some of the ongoing costs of the show, like web hosting, travel, equipment, etc., then visit patreon.com slash vmspod or paypal.me slash vmspod and make a one-time or recurring donation. Special thanks go out to our regular supporters, Paul W. Jones, Michael Janizek, Fred Kish, Jonathan Kranz, Andrew Mason, Greg Tanner, Zach Martin, Craig P. Steffen, and Ron Slate, who have gone over and above in their support of the Virtual Memories Show. There's a full list of show supporters at chimeraobscura.com slash vm. Till next time, you can subscribe to the show and download past episodes at the iTunes Store. You can also find all our episodes and get on our email list at either of our websites vmspod.com or chimeraobscura.com slash vm. And both of those pages will have links to the special Thanksgiving 2016 site where you can find out more information about all the guests who appeared as well as the uh, multimedia work like photos from Jonathan Hyman, cartoons from Bob Eckstein, and a video link from Liz Hand. You can follow the Virtual Memory Show on Twitter at vmspod as well as on Instagram at VMSPod, on Facebook at facebook.com slash virtualmemoriesshow, and at virtualmemoriespodcast.tumblr.com. And if you like this show, please go to iTunes, look up the Virtual Memories Show, and leave a rating and review for this podcast. It'll help us build a bigger audience. And until next time, you've been listening to the Virtual Memories Show. I'm your host, Gil Roth, and you are awesome. Keep it that way. And have a happy Thanksgiving.